everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here. Hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, man, I hope that the live stream I did earlier on uh, 50 Cent and Marquise Jackson and the underpinnings of that and the framing of that, I hope that really catches on because there's so much to learn from that beyond the whole argument of about $6,700. It's amazing how things get, fr get framed and the real true issues are missed. Um, and again, this wasn't me attacking 50. This was me talking about the need to understand the importance of the presence of the man. Um, from what I gather, he was around a lot when you know, 50 was near his mom. When his mom left, obviously she took the kid with him. Uh, when you have those type of resources, you gotta make things happen some kind of way. And I'm not going to judge it because I don't know the underpinnings, but I do understand what goes on when that happens from a perspective of a child, not just because of the thousands of hours of research over what now 30 years uh, in human behavior um, and 25 books under my belt but because I was that kid. So I understand that. Uh, and again, uh, this goes beyond just throwing everything on the lap of the man, but I believe if men are gonna be leaders, uh, then we have to be willing to hold the, the heavy. And that's not always fun. It, it, it's not always glorious. Uh, and a lot of times we carry the brunt of things we didn't necessarily create. But that's what being a leader is about. That's what being the head is about. That's what being a king and operating in your dominion is about. It's about owning all of the stuff that's going on within your dominion and making sure you find a way to fix what's broken. Now, on to what I want to talk about here. Uh, first and foremost, well, not first and foremost, we just talked about something. But next, uh, show some love and support for the work we do. Uh, go to the description description box, click the link, show some love, give, donate. What we do in the research capacity, what we do in the think tank capacity, what we do in programs and resources isn't free. Show some love, show some support. We are going to have to get united in that area. Now with that out of the way. Eddie Robinson Jr. decided that he wasn't feeling Dion. Now his when Dion, they, they played, the two schools played, Jackson State and uh, Alabama, uh, Southern Alabama, Alabama, whatever, whatever uh, school in the SWAC that Eddie Robinson Jr. coaches at, played against Jackson, uh, Jackson State. Jackson State won 26-7, to seven, something like that. And when Dion crossed the field and went to give, you know, the bro hug, uh, he got pushed away. And so it, it became a little contentious. And the dude said that, he ain't, you know, Dion ain't swack. Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes with what he meant or idea, but he said Dion ain't swack, so he wasn't feeling that. And then when pressed more about it, he pointed to the fact that at the end of the game, they ran a hitch and go play, which is a play uh, that's like, you know, you're trying to score a touchdown. And so he, he was upset that they were trying to score. The score was 26-7. to seven. The game was already uh, in the bag. Why was he trying to score? So he felt that was the reason that he didn't like Dion. He didn't feel him. He felt he was trying to run up the score. Here's the one thing I can tell you. And we're going to get a little deeper into this. Here's the one thing I can tell you. When in today's society, one of the things I think that gives me the credibility that I have is I've been real consistent in my message. I've been real consistent in my behavior. I haven't been perfect, but I walk what I talk. I do the best I can to live what I live what I talk, uh, uh, and I I do it in every aspect. No, I'm not perfect, but I'm damn sure walking towards the best per version of me I can be. Uh, and but in what I say. I say with consistency. I don't flip flop. I don't come up with dumbass reasons why I do dumbass stuff to justify it. I try to be consistent in what I am, who I am, what I speak, what I teach, so that I can be held to it and I can be tested on it and I can stand sure and, and true on it. And that's who I've been. 
the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's who I've been. And, and, and that's manhood to me. That's me saying, hey, look, this is where I'm at. And in the times where I've spoken on something and realized I was off, you guys know I'll come back in a minute and print a retraction, do a video retraction. However I posted it, I'm coming back that way and say, hey, look, I said this yesterday, I said this last week, and this is what I discovered, I apologize. No big deal. I am not trying to be that perfect person that knows everything and always right. I'm trying to be the person that can give the, 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 the most energy force and source to a solution for my people but right after you know the internet is unforgiving if it's ever happened in the in in the era of the internet it's on the internet and what you got to understand there are people with nothing but time to go find something to come back on you with again why i try so hard to be consistent in my message and if i shift in my message give an explanation of why so that you can see the reasoning for the shift and the change in direction but when you sit up and you talk about uh the reason you ain't feeling dion is because he tried to run up the score it was 26 to 7 and there's a picture of you not only hugging the co the white coach for UCLA who beat you 45 to seven, but you hugging him and got him and gave him the back rub. Now, this ain't the reason I'm on here, but I, I gotta talk about why we're like this. But I have to give you, a, for that those who haven't kept up, some insight on what happened. Okay, so now you're saying he ain't swag. Well, let's talk about the he ain't swag thing next. When he said Dion, Dion ain't swag And that's why he ain't feeling him No, Dion did not go to uh, A historically black university He definitely wasn't in the swag He went to Florida State Was an All-American uh, Can be in the conversation As the best football player To play the game Because of the many different ways He played it This guy could have made the Hall of Fame Just returning punts but he's most known for being the best cornerback to ever play the game. He also played offense and receivers, caught touchdowns. The dude was dynamic. He even threw one, I think. The dude, now you also have to think this guy is one of two people, the other being Bo Jackson, that suited up. He's the only guy that suited up in the NFL and the Major League Baseball the same day. This is the kind of dude we're talking about. Him and Bo Jackson are the only two to be in the World Series and the Super Bowl. Well, what, I don't think Bo was in the Super Bowl. But it was something else, Bo. But Dion, that's Dion. Dion has played in the Super Bowl and in the World Series. This is the kind of cat we're talking about. So, no, he didn't come from the SWAC, but he went into the SWAC. And here's what I can tell you. From whatever I've been able to... Uh, together and so those who don't know i have connections to athletics i you know long 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 time ago another life but you know i can talk to a lot of people and get a lot of information uh i'm not name dropping and doing all that shit but i have a path those who know know uh what i've been able to find is he actually cares about his kids He's not there just to win football games. He's there to impact the lives of young black males. Uh, from what I can gather by the people that I've talked to um, that may be a little bit closer to the situation, I don't know anybody specifically at Jackson State, but I know a couple of people who have engaged him, and they have been very clear that Dion is showing up. Uh, he is showing up in a major way. Uh, he has lent the trainers from Jackson State to, I want to say Alcorn State, if I'm not mistaken, when they didn't have trainers. He has lent his facilities to another SWAC school when something went wrong at their school. He's been consistently showing brotherhood towards the men in the SWAC who are coaches who are trying to impact black boys. He has held his young boys to a standard. He has changed the dress code. He has demanded much of them. And so the idea that he's not swag, how are you defining it? You know, that he didn't play swag. And here, here's the thing, and I'm, I'm very careful about this because the name Eddie Robinson is powerful now. Uh, the junior is another thing. 
I mean, can you imagine the pressure of being the son of the winning, winningest coach in SWAC history and one of the winningest coaches in football? Um, period. Eddie Robinson is a legend. And Eddie Robinson Jr. is coming off of that and has roads paid for him. And that's the way it should be. Your legacy is the right paths for your children. Your children should have great roads paid for them because of what you've done. I have no problem with Eddie Robinson Jr. having a space in SWAC because his dad defined and gave it a name. I have no problem with that. Here's the problem that I see. And if I'm wrong, I, I stand corrected and I have no problem apologizing, but I'm looking at the behavior and it's a common behavior among black men that I don't like. We're way too competitive with each other when what we need to be doing is standing with one another. We need to be fighting and pushing and holding one another up because we need to be unified in order to have force in a space where there are fewer of us and definitely fewer of us on pos in positions of power and on platforms of impact. And that is so important. I see it in, in, in the realm of, uh, uh, of the black community operate where we're talking activism and, 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 and scholarship and, and all of these. There's these little side shots. Everybody's taking at everybody. And, I, and if you notice, I stay away from it. There are some things I know. There are some things that people have done to me personally that nobody except my closest friends know. And I told them, hey, don't tell nobody, man. I'm just sharing you this here. This is what happened. And the reason being is I can't do it all. Not everybody's gonna like me. I don't have an expertise in every area. And to sit up and go attack somebody because I got a personal thing with them in an open spectrum where that's gonna create schisms. And those schisms are the divisions of the followers of the people that are now involved going at each other. So now you've got this, this not just two people, but cliques. You, uh, pro probably the biggest thing that we can think of in our lifetime was East Coast, West Coast beef because of Pac and Big. That's what can happen when you get division within people who have a commonality but decide to use something divisive amongst them to create this division and then create this energy that pushes towards one another and everything is destructive everything is destructive whether it's physical violence like we saw with the east coast west coast thing whether it's financial disruption and meaning that we are already in a ever widening uh economic gap and wealth gap with whites that that gets exacerbated because we won't work together because we won't pray. but more importantly you're talking about black men who have the ability to impact the lives of young black males all of which will not make professional football so they will be doing something else in this world and you have an, a, an opportunity to impact them and you're getting inside of your own feelings about something and what my take on it is is Dion is carrying more clout in swag right now in, 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 in college football, but definitely in swag right now than the name Eddie Robinson. And that is bothering Eddie Robinson Jr. that everybody's talking about Dion. And what Eddie has to understand is he is carrying the name of a legend. Dion is a legend. Dion brought his own brand to the swag. He was prime, prime time, prime time Deion Sanders before he ever got there. Now, what he's done since he's been there is nothing short of amazing. And I'm not talking about what he's done on the field. That's that's exceptional. I'm talking about the culture that he's created. I'm talking about he's not grandstanding nobody. He's showing love and he's being there and he's he's connecting with whoever wants to connect with him. This is one of the best players to ever be on the field and he's showing absolute love to uh, people who are doing the same thing he's doing without the fanfare that is immensely valuable in the grand scope of things get, get beside there are people out there right now 
that got way more exposure than me, that know a fraction of what I know. And I will big up them every time and every chance I get because they have the reach and I don't. I can get mad and say, man, why are you watching this? Why are you clicking that? Why are you over there? That, that, that bull crap they're doing. Blah. For what? I'm going to be me. And what I'm going to do is work on being a better version of me. I'm going to work on being a more diverse version of me. Maybe it's things I need to do to reach more people. Not complaining about the people that reaching people. That doesn't help. Me sitting up beefing with somebody. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people out there. They're literally creating beefs with one another because of the exposure. I refuse to do that. I'm not going to go cre create a beef with you. Now, if something actually really pops off and somebody comes at me hard in the paint, I will deal with it accordingly. But I'm not easily stirred. It ain't a whole lot that shakes ground with me. I've been in the game too long. I've been through too many things. I'm not easily most, listen, like, 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 like the saying goes, elephants don't swat flies. You gotta be coming real heavy and I gotta really feel you to make me wanna come at you. The little bull crap shots that people take and, and little stuff like that. You know, if you do it on my page, I'm going to come get at you real quick, but nothing major. But sitting up starting uh, beefs on, on these social media things that we don't own so that we can get some kind of clout or credibility. And what we're doing is dividing our people. What we should do is come together. But here's the problem, though. And this is another thing that adds to this whole thing with Eddie Robinson Jr. Black men have been so emasculated meaning that we have been re rendered impotent in the form of having power to influence things that when we get it we don't want to share it you look at you go to the average black church you're going to find and if it's been around long enough and it's not in the in the process of a new cycle you're going to find a 75 80 year old pastor who's been in his seat for 35 40 years and nobody is the heir apparent. Why? Because that's the only power he's ever experienced. And he's going to ride it till he dies. He hasn't trained anybody to pass the baton. Something that I said 20 years ago. By the time I'm 55, I want to step down off the front lines. I want to become the silent voice of wisdom to younger bucks who have the energy, who I get prepared, who can go out have the energy and the connectivity to a younger audience that won't relate to me. Give them the baton. Let them do the work. I sit back and I am the person that when they need advice, I give it to them. I don't need to be on the front lines. I don't need to be the face of anything. That's what I'm doing. And I've got several men. And these cats, you know, Ryan, Jeremy, these cats I trust. Michael Jordan, I trust these guys are putting in the work. I got a couple of ones younger than them in their 20s that I'm mentoring that I'm going to connect all of these kids. And I'm about to step back. I'm going to be, you know, I'll do the interviews. I'm still going to write books. But all this warring on the front line is wearing on me. And I don't need it to feel good about myself. I've, I've rode hard for a long time. I've done some things in my life that I'm exceptionally proud of. And I can sit now and work my ass off from a different position. I don't have to kill myself on the front line. I don't need anybody's validation. And see, that's the problem. We're so busy trying to hold on to something and grab something. We can't give it to the ones who can take it. I'll say this and I'm done. I've said this for years that the only way we're ever really truly going to experience power is we're going to need men who are willing to plant seeds that they may not live long enough to see come to fruition. We, want, we got too many instantaneous glorification cats right now. I need somebody to call my name and say what I did. I need a star. I need somebody, you know, we've got all of that. Nobody wants to sit up and say, man, I'm going to plant a seed. It may take 50 years for that seed to grow, but my grandkids are experiencing it. We don't think that far ahead, man. When I think about my grandkids, I get emotional. I love them. I love my great grandkids. They're not even here. Why? Because I was trained to be concerned about what I produce. I don't want 
my great-grandkids inheriting what I inherited. So I'm going to work my ass off to change it. But men, all this beefing and com competing, man, we need to come together. We need to stand together. We need to build together. Everybody worried about how they can position themselves and to bump the other person off and get, get a piece of their market. Are you freaking killing me? I'm going to get ready to get out of here. We've got to do better. On that note, I'm going to ask you again, show some love, show some support for the work we're doing. I'm going to get off here and get inside. You guys have an unbelievable day.